much. I want to dedicate this 200th episode to Maria Ramos. Te quiero mucho, tía. Thank you for everything that you've done for this family and safe travels. Now on with the show. Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of the We Speak English Good Podcast. Today's guest on this 200th episode is Mr. Blaze Garza of The Violent Femmes. Blaze is a saxophone player. Um, well, he's he's a saxophone player. He's also a multi-instrumentalist. He plays piano and all this shit. He's <laughs> he does a lot of stuff actually. But but he is part of the horn section, which goes by Horns of Dilemma. He, and I I just want to point this out that he has a contrabass that he travels with, and that's pretty awesome. And it's like a crazy contraption. So and I think the one the brand he has, there's only like ten in the entire world or something. So. Uh, yeah, Blaze has had a blessed a, a, a career. He's just uh, a, and he's super talented. I just I respect the guy so much. And we go way back. We've toured together. Uh, we've palled around together. And uh, I just I'm so happy for my friend Blaze out there on the road currently. But he's also he lives in Australia where where it is winter now, which I had no idea. I didn't I didn't know that it was opposites over there. From us, I, d- I didn't know. We'll get the blaze here in a second, but first, I want to talk uh, about wristgrips.com. If you are a musician and have any kind of wrist pain, uh, or, or if you have any kind of numbness in your fingers from years of improperly playing your instrument, or just years of pl- wear and tear on your body, because that's what happens, man. Your body just starts degrading, and, and you know your hands go with it. And, and this goes for guitarists, drummers, keyboardists, uh, everybody, anybody who plays an instrument. I, I think that these would be beneficial for. I had a chance to use them over this last weekend, and I have to say there is a big improvement in my pain. And and uh, uh, I would highly recommend wrist grips. So go to wristgrips.com, check them out. You'll be hearing more about wrist grips in the future. I just want to give a quick shout out to Ryan and 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 a big thank you for for uh, sending me a pair out and for me to try. Uh, While you're out there on riskgrips.com, go check out wespeakenglishgood.net. It's it's newly redesigned, and it looks way better than it did before. That that's all I got to say about that. You can also follow us on Instagram at We Speak English Good, and uh, on uh, Facebook at We Speak English Good. You can leave a review uh, or, or or rate the podcast on iTunes. Uh, you you know, you give us five stars if you if you feel we deserve it. Uh, <laughs> not trying to give you any suggestions or or you know. I tell you exactly what to say. Like, I love this podcast so much. It's the greatest podcast I've ever listened to in my entire life. And Mikey P is a sexy sex god with sex just coming out of his pores. You know, I'm not trying to say anything like that. But but, but you can go and do all that, uh, you know, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast. Rating the podcast helps. It helps the algorithms, uh, you know, point us point people in our direction i think i don't know i don't even know really what algorithm means i just know it's very popular word to say uh when it comes to computers and computing all right you can write the show at we speak english good at gmail.com let me know what you think of this episode and and if you did get a pair of wrist grips or if you're a musician who has wrist grips please email me i'd love to know about your experience so this is the 200th episode, and uh, I have a little bit more to say about it, so stick around after the interview and uh, and hear me blather on about things, if you would like. You don't have to. Also, this was recorded back in early July, so it, it's a couple months old, or, or almost a couple months old, I guess, but I, I knew that I wanted Blaze to be my 200th, and so I canned him until I could get... Uh, to 200. So I think I record this around 193 is where we're at. So it's been a few in between there. So 
let's 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 get over this blathering shit right now. Let's get into this podcast, okay? Let's do this shit. Motherfucking give it up for Mr. Blaze Garza of The Violet Fibs. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, not much. How are you? I'm doing well. In fact, how are you doing? I'm um, good. Yeah, so, um, I, it's 10 a.m., right? We are correct. Like, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and then and then it was interesting to know or find out that it was six degrees where you are because I have no idea about geography <laughs> and like how the world works. I'm just... Yeah, I'm just in my little bubble. So thank you for uh, educating me. Yeah. <laughs> so fuck. let's see what what is it today actually? Oh yes, let's let's find out. It says it's nine degrees Celsius. It's nine degrees Celsius. So how does that translate? I don't even know. Um, that's how that's how. It's uh, fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, nice. Well, that's not too bad then, right? Like, uh, fifty degrees is is deal. That's you could deal with that. Is is that about? Yeah. Is that about how cold it gets out there? Um. Well, no, it gets colder. It gets down to negative one Celsius, oh, which okay. would be like, I guess the twenties probably yeah. in Fahrenheit, oh, like high twenties. Shit. So it so it freezes. There's like frozen stuff. Yeah, it snows occasionally. Um, in the higher elevation, it definitely snows. Okay, so you're in Hobart, Tasmania, and yeah, and now that's a part of uh, Australia. Yeah, so Tasmania is a state of Australia. Okay. Um, it's an island just south of the mainland. God, yeah. And yeah. why? And the Hobart f- is the biggest city in Tasmania. Okay, and now why the fuck do you live? <laughs> Why are you living there? I'm just curious. I'm not judging you, so don't, please don't take offense to how I asked that. I'm just very curious. How did that happen? Yeah, I uh, did a gig there New Year's 2015, and um, I had 11 days on my visa to explore Tasmania. And I went hiking and uh, just tried to see as much as I could. And I really, really liked it. And then uh, I decided it was really beautiful and I wanted to move there. So then I started the process to move over, um, initially doing a one-year working holiday visa just to kind of feel it out and see if I really liked it. Then after I decided I really liked it and I wanted to move here, uh, I started the process for permanent residency, which I then received. Oh, I heard that it's like extremely difficult to become a resident of Australia. Is, Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I had a migration agent who was very helpful, ah. um, which makes it a lot easier than trying to navigate the paperwork and s- yourself. Right now, do you how how do you acquire a, a, a visa agent? Is that what you call them? Oh yeah, they're just you could just look it up. Oh, you just pay somebody to like, hey, I need this yeah. done, and, and they're like, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so if, yeah, it's like hiring a tax professional. Gotcha. Okay, so if someone was gonna move to Australia from America or whatever, you would highly suggest a visa agent. Yeah, a migration agent. A migration agent. Somebody to help. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fucking to help awesome. you build the strongest case. You yeah. Can okay. For so yourself. So if you don't mind, what was what was your case? What what was your argument for moving? Um. Well, I came I came over on a distinguished talent visa. Oh, yes, because oh, l- let me actually introduce you. I know we just dove right in because I am so interested that you live out there. I think that's so fucking cool, man. Um, I'm talking to Blaze Garza. Uh, he is uh, he is a member of the Violent Femmes, and, and you have your own band, right? You do the is it called Horns of Chaos? I'm so sorry that I don't know this. Is 
But oh, um, Horns of Dilemma is the name of the horn section with the femmes. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, but don't you guys do your own like sort of opening act thing, or is that am I just totally wrong? Um, John and I, yeah, John and I have done some stuff. We we did we performed um, John Coltrane's Interstellar Space. Oh my god. Hello? But um, other than that, yeah, other than that, I don't think we've done too much on our own. Okay, okay. Well, okay, so let's just <laughs> let's just back up a little bit. Um, so uh, you are originally from San Diego, is that's right, correct? Yeah. Okay, uh, and, and I, I love your story because we've, we, we've known each other for a while now. We've played in bands together, a couple of them, I think. No, just one. I don't know. But we played in, band, we played in a band together and actually did a weird, weird tour in the Midwest. <laughs> but, uh, but before that, <laughs> you, you were a child actor, correct? Uh, yeah, so that's how I started my career. Um, when I was about six, I did my first commercial, and then I was on a soap opera for two years and did a handful of commercials and a few films during that time. And, and so, did, and I oh. did that until I was about um, fourteen ish, and then I did, started doing a lot less of the acting work and started doing more music. When did you pick up the saxophone? I started playing sax when I was 12. Oh, okay, okay. So you were acting, and, and you were like a nimble kid, right? Like you did tumble work. Was that when you were a littler kid? Because I know you got older, and you did tumble work on for film and stuff. Like you did, uh, you were in uh, uh, Bring It On, one of the Bring It Ons, correct? Yeah, Bring It On 5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but you're a tumbler, which... By the way, yeah, I didn't do I didn't do that until I was um, seventeen. Oh, okay. So that was so, something I did later on. Oh, that's dope. That's so dope. See, I love you, Blaze, because you are like uh, uh, you were just absolutely fearless on taking on new projects that are like it's just and, and from a kid, it sounds like it. I, I don't know. I I, uh, I I admire like that that you just been grinded when, when you were doing acting as a kid and stuff, were you doing uh were you in school going to school full time or were you doing homeschool? What were you, how was you, how were you educating yourself? Yeah. So I was in school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would, I would also have an onset teacher mm -hmm. for the days that I would be filming. So that was more when I was on the soap opera and I would need to shoot for like three or four days in a row. I'd have an onset teacher and we would do, you know, essentially the same assignments, but just myself and any of the other kids on set. Yeah. That's um, but yeah, so I guess I was between regular school and like, I guess, a on set type of tutor. Well, I, I, I'm becoming more and more interested in this because my son, so I live in Ohio now. I don't know if you know that at all, but I, I moved out of California about two years ago and I moved back to Ohio and actually to that house. I think you've been to my parents' house. I live in that house. Have you been, did you come to my parents' house when you were here? Oh yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So I live in that house, like out in the middle of the fucking cornfields, which I thought was going to be horrible, but it actually has been nice because I've been actually able to uh, expand as a musician and, uh, and my talents and stuff. So it's been nice. Cause you know how, like when you're in the hustle and bustle of a big city, you're just grinding to get by. And, uh, well, that was what we were doing anyways. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you don't really have time to sort of work on yourself and work on your, your, your material because you're constantly hustling for rent. So coming here is sort of, you know, cost of living is a lot less so it, it's been nice to be able to, to just get to know myself a little better as a musician and artist but i was just letting you know i'm not in california anymore but my son he just got uh, an agent here a local agent and he just booked his first gig he's five years old and so like this nice. whole yeah right it's his first paid gig it's 200 bucks he's just got to take a couple pictures it's like 20 minute shoot or something and uh, I mean, he I mean, he's very charismatic and has that thing, whatever that is. I mean, he's just a beautiful young boy, a beautiful young man, you know, and uh, 
whatever it is that that char- char- charisma i don't know i mean do you think that's what sort of i mean like someone who's gone through the process of like especially being a kid doing auditions and stuff do you think that there's some sort of charisma that sort of attracts people to someone to hire them or do you think it's just b- random luck and with talent i mean what, what what's your opinion on that um it's probably a bit of everything honestly um <laughs> No, you no. You have to be charismatic and easier to work with, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't be that that uh, that asshole and not show up on time and you know be disrespectful to the crew and shit. Uh, did, yeah, but what, then you think about it, and then everybody who's going on the audition is probably already like that. So then you have to pick them and find the one who's the most talented, you know. So I think it's a bit of everything. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, you well. <laughs> Uh, do you feel like that uh i mean because like it's interesting your your career has been very uh, like it's amazing and and it's been interesting because um because i'm going off memory here because like i said we've uh we have a history and so like we've talked and uh and you're currently with the violent femmes but this is not the first time that you uh played with them uh how did you first come in contact with the femmes Oh yeah. Um, back in 2004, one of the, uh, femmes guys, crew guys named Zip, he, um, he told, he was talking to Brian and told Brian about me. And at the time I had just performed this solo with uh, central coast Philharmonia, which is a 250 plus orchestra that performed a, uh, award-winning composer's new piece and um the piece had a featured a sax solo which i got to premiere so this guy zip told brian about my performance and then brian invited me to sit in with the femmes when they came through san diego and i sat in and did a good job so then they invited me out to the next gig in uh, la and then they just kept inviting me out every time they're on the west coast uh, so so okay okay so you were so you were constantly in contact with these guys after they sort of picked you up for those west coast tours um uh, you so this was something that every time they came around you were jumping on correct yeah awesome that okay i didn't know that like all those years you were just sort of so, so was this all happening when, like, we knew each other? Like, were you, like, leaving for, like, a couple of weeks to go and hit a West Coast tour with the Femmes? Uh, I don't think so, because I don't, I don't remember. I think we met after 2007. Oh, you're in absolutely- 2007, oh, yes. the guys took a long break, so. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, because we did, yeah, we probably met, like, a year later or something, or in 2009 or something like that. Um. <clears throat> right on so but but uh there was uh something else to it there you had like a, a rare saxophone or something correct yeah so i um i brought out my contrabass sax and um brian loved it and it's actually now become a pretty big part of the live show and actually on the new album and the last album, there's a couple of pieces that have contrabass sax as well. That's dope. How uh, now is that thing a pain in the ass to like to to like travel with? Yeah, I mean it's it's one large piece oh. of brass, you know. So um it has to ride standing up in the trailer. Oh shit. <laughs> um, because it's so so large uh, and the trailer shakes, you know it constantly needs to be fine tuned and readjusted. Wow. Wow. That sounds, that sounds, that does sound like a pain. Is that so, is that something that you have to do yourself because of the rarity of those things? Or do you, uh, no, you have the crew go ahead and it's like, go ahead and just handle it. No, no, no. Um, usually just there's a music store in town. Um, if I need any serious repairs and most music wow. stores can accommodate, Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I bet you get a lot of like uh, fun little conversations when you're bringing in a contrabass, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Usually but, everybody kind of pokes their head out and wants to like check it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely causes a scene. Uh, the now the those the it has. I know, like, when we were talking about it, you said there was only, like, I don't know, maybe 14 or 15 of them ever made or something. Is that still the case, or has there been more in production since then? Yeah, so the kind that I have, the Orsi, um, which is an Italian company, the Orsi Contrabass Axe, there was only 12 ever made of. Mm -hmm. And um, I have one of those. And then there, there's a couple of current manufacturers who are making contrabass sacks. Um, Benedict Appelsheim out of Germany has um, his design. And then there's a company out of Brazil that has a more traditional style, like a more traditional saxophone shape design. Yeah. And then those two companies also have a compact version which is wrapped about four times and has a narrower bore. Uh, and those are called two axes. Damn. <laughs> That's awesome. So now did you, uh, you collect saxophones, which I remember seeing online, which I, uh, I only know your past like 10 years of your life because of, because of Facebook. So like, I remember seeing you did a, uh, a show, right? Like you had a, uh, like a, a show somewhere with your collection. Oh yeah. Yeah. The NAMM show, uh, featured oh, that my was at the collection NAM? one year. That's a... And then, um, the NAMM museum of making music in Carlsbad had a, um, saxophone history and saxophone display mm. and i lent a large amount of my collection for that um show now uh, when you say my collection do you are you one of those collectors who has like who has like so many that you just don't know the number or do you know exactly how many and it's not that much i don't know no i, I know how many um i have I have one of each type, um, like each make like alto, soprano, tenor, etc. cetera. Mm. That is my main for that instrument. And then I usually have a couple of doubles for, for each of them. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so it's not a crazy collection, but you have some nice pieces that, that, that sometimes you let people put on display. That, that's uh that's nice. I like that, man. So, <laughs> So coming up through San Diego and and I was I imagine you're traveling to LA a lot as a kid and stuff like uh what was what when you decide when was it that you were like I'm just going to be an artist for the rest of my life and that's what I'm doing or was there ever a question was there ever a moment where you're like maybe I should just get a job or you know cuz cuz you went to school you're you're very educated you at a very good school uh, what, have you ever considered something else? Um, no, I don't think I ever decided to be an artist, as you just said. Well, I but, know, um, I know you just sort of like, that's just what happened. <laughs> and, uh, but okay. So it just, it was an organic thing you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to take as, as much music work as I can get, um, because it's my passion, but I, I recently got into the Cirque world. So um, this company, Strut and Fret, had a new show called Life, which I was able to collaborate on and be a part of. Oh, you're talking about and, circus um, stuff. Yeah. Oh, my, you said Cirque, and I'm like, what the fuck is Cirque? But I just saw a video of you, <laughs> of you playing the saxophone, swinging back and forth, which is incredible. Uh, because I mean, if anybody's ever seen Blaze play, I don't know. Do you still flip on stage or flip off stage, or is that not what you do anymore? I'm, I'm, I'm... Um, no, I haven't done that in a long time. Okay. <laughs> I used to. Yeah. Yeah. Blaze used to like do flips and shit on stage while playing the sack. It's excuse me, I just choked on my own spit. Uh, it, it's incredible. Uh, okay, so so you're getting into this the Cirque, uh, world, and and it, okay, so. How did you get sort of uh, led into that? Um, well, the producer of the, the show, Scott Maiman, uh, and I had a conversation, and he had actually seen me perform with the Femmes when we played 
at the WOMAD Festival in Adelaide, Australia. And then uh, he asked if I wanted to be a part of his new show. And I was excited because I've, I've always been interested in um, Cirque and acrobatics and that, and that kind of thing. Um, I do like acro yoga and partner acrobatics just for fun as a hobby. And at that point, I had been doing it for about a year. Um, so I was excited to be a part of this show. And then, um, af- you know, after it was fine, fine like the whole show is finished um uh, i ended up flying on a wire harness while playing the sax so that ended up being a cool little act <laughs> this shit is awesome and if anybody like i mean everybody listening to this should go and, li- and go and follow place garza on facebook and look at his because it's incredible like you're the what so the facebook thing i saw um, it, I, I looked like you're on a giant pole sort of swaying back oh, yeah. and forth. Like what, what? Yeah. So I just did in another strut and fret show. This one was in um, the Bahamas at the Atlantis resort. And, um, that show is called showtime at the pink flamingo. Um, and in that show, there's the, the sway pole is what the apparatus is called. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, that was me messing around after after a show. I just got, went up on this weight pole to try it out and then uh, <laughs> tried it out with this axe. So I'm hoping to do that at some point in a future show. Oh, okay. So that was just you experimenting. That wasn't... Yeah, that was only actually my second time ever up on the sway pole. <sighs> Okay, I, I know that must take an amount, uh, amazing amount of balance and like core strength and stuff. Like, is there... Like... I, do you have to like exercise a lot to sort of maintain like breath and uh, a- a- and balance and all that? I mean, is there, I mean, what kind of training goes into that? Yeah, I stay pretty active just in general. Um, I go hiking a lot, and usually I walk. Uh, whenever I'm on tour, I, I walk pretty much everywhere unless it's, you know, particularly far, or particularly hot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. So that keeps me active. And then, um, I also do work out a little bit. And, and you do acrobatic yoga for fun. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, like I, I've done a couple yoga classes and, and my big ass is in there. Like just, you know, I lift weights, but like, Yoga, and I mean, I know acrobatic yoga is like a whole nother level of fucking yoga, but like just the classes that I've taken, like, and and you think that you're strong, but when you're in those fucking positions and, and, and your arms start shaking and your fucking chest is shaking, like all of a sudden you're shaking like a little dog. Uh, that's some real shit, man. And so people who are just sitting there like, oh, yoga's for ladies or whatever. It's like, nah, man, take your ass in there and sweat. Go see what happens. Uh, you crumble. You crumble a lot. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so do you do, you do the acrobatic yoga? Do you do like regular yoga too? Or are you just sort of like to do cardio? I, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, I mean, I stretch. That's the, the biggest thing. I usually spend at least 15 minutes just going through a bunch of different stretches. Mm. And then um, I just do mostly body work, like body weight work. Mm-hmm. So like um, frog and squat jumps and, uh, you know, push-ups, handstands, et cetera. <laughs> handstands, upside down push-ups. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the like thing. just handstand holds. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I, I was just being ridiculous, but it, just because I, you can walk on your hands pretty well, can't you? Isn't that like one of the things you do? Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, no. It's just you have a great frame for it. Like you just like, uh, and I'm not trying to like, you know, say anything rude to you. I'm just saying like you have a great frame for just being jumping around and flipping around and shit it's it like you know how some people are just made for that it's like 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 uh nfl players who are just like huge and just like they were born to do that because their body and their genetics allowed it i feel like that's that's sort of your body type your genetics were sort of made for balance and all that crazy stuff that you like to do that is terrifying to me because (laughs) 
that. But I'm a clumsy elf, so you know my my endomorphic body type is like, where's the cake? You know, and that's that's about as much of that as I do. So, so so tell me, man, like fucking uh, when the band I notice plays out in australia a lot do you guys have like a a, like a huge following out there as well as out here in the states well yeah so so brian the bass player and i both live in tasmania Mm. um and so you know we're active in the music community out here and then the fems also has a large following in australia so we've done an australia tour i think every year for the last three years that's dope hell yeah now was this something that's been a constant for them or was this something that sort of re-emerged in the past uh you know 10 years or something um well the band got back back together oh, and started touring right. again that's right that's right yeah. so they took a hiatus around 2007 and then once they got back yeah. into it they were just like australia loves us we're going yeah, so they got back together um, like the start of 2014, mm. and um, I joined them on the Canada tour, uh, which is the Montreal Jazz Festival. That's and, right. Uh, I talk. I remember running to into you at the OB, one of the OB fairs, and you were like, "Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to Montreal," and I was like, "Oh." Well, isn't that fucking cute? Like, but I, I was like that, but but like I didn't realize like how far you were like in it at that point, and so I was just like, oh, that's what you're doing now. <laughs> so like that was, that I mean, and I love that. I love I love seeing my friends that that go out and just like do awesome. You know, like like uh, Omar Lopez is another guy who's just like killing. Yeah, it. you know, it's funny. I bumped into him at the airport. <laughs> Awesome. I think like a year ago, to, and it was funny. I took a picture with him, posted That's... it because it was like ten years, yeah, almost. Man. And um, th- we toured together, you know, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Well, and I, I think he's with the Whalers now, right? Right, exactly. Him yeah. and uh, I don't know if you know AK or Adrian, but he's another guy in the sort of San Diego scene that sort of got brought in. Um, yeah, man, that. <laughs> That tour, um, so so I kind of want to talk about that because I don't know if we've ever talked about like what you saw those, and I don't know if you remember or even care to remember. I mean, it was just because like a lot of that it was just me being fucked up and ruining everything, and and, and you were uh, I think you weren't even eighteen yet, right? You were like still underage or you weren't twenty one or something. You had to like you had to like play. I, think I was like twenty. Yeah, and and you they wouldn't let you stay in the bar. You had to play and then like go hang out outside. I, I don't know. Yeah, there was there was just so much chaos. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I just remember there was a lot of chaos for me, especially because I I mean like in Chicago, it was it was sort of a second home for me at the time. So, like, I was just, like, as soon as we were done playing, like, I just disappear into the night. Uh, do you, What do you remember about that? Because I, I me- remember very little. And I, don't, and I don't even know if you want to even talk about it. We don't even have to talk about this if you don't want to. But, like, <laughs> I, because it was, like, for me, it was, like, a, an adventure of, in depravity and just, you know, just being a fucking, just the biggest fuck up of, of my career. <laughs> uh which you know whatever that tour was whatever but uh i don't know what what do you remember about that um well that night specifically i I remember because i was just chilling outside the venue i think you had a bottle that you got from inside oh shit oh yeah 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 um it was like a handle of jim beam right or some crazy thing it was like a it was a huge bottle I, Something like that. I remember a huge. So, so you're just hanging out outside, and I just walked out with liquor bottle, and I mean, and it, yeah, and I, just, and I think that pissed some people off. Oh, 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 yeah, because I took it from behind the bar. Oh shit. Okay, I haven't thought about this shit in a long time. Okay, this is interesting. 
<laughs> this is well, that was the, the main thing I remember. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, yeah, because we had a couple shows in, in Chicago, and then I think we did a show in Toledo, and then it was over. It was just a very short thing. It wasn't much to it, but but I, I just remember you being there, but like... Who were you staying with when we were in Toledo? Like, were you... I think you were... Wait, fuck. You were staying here or at Justin's? I I think maybe Justin's. Okay. That was probably the safer bet. I think Omar. Or Justin's dad's place or something? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, this is like... This is like us reminiscing about stuff very specific to us that no one could relate to. So that's nice. (laughs) But, uh... So... With uh, with with the fems and like, how much time does that consume for you in like throughout the year? Is that like a, is that like a huge commitment? I mean, obviously you're able to do other things, but like, what what's sort of your schedule? Uh, I know you said you did uh, you do Australia every year and for the past three years, but is there like a rehearsal schedule? Is there a like a writing schedule how how much of a commitment is it to be part of a, a, a such a historical band you know like i mean amazing uh so i don't know what what's your schedule like with them what's your commitment like um well we don't rehearse <laughs> nice i like that um we just like they, we go usually on two or three week runs mm-hmm. and, um just do short shorter tours like that and then um, we usually do a handful of those a year. So um, we just finished one up in May, and we're getting ready to go out again in July. Oh. And then that tour will go um, July, August through September. Now, now is that going to be Australia? No, that's going to be the States. Oh, hell That'll yeah. That'll be with um, Ben Folds. Oh, hell yeah. Awesome. What? Uh, what's uh? Is, are you gonna be in the Midwest at all? Or are you gonna do just like a coast, like a like a couple weeks on the coast? Or um, I think we're gonna do some Midwest gigs. I have oh. to double check. Okay. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure it's on the website. <laughs> I'm sure people will have a tro- have any uh, trouble finding those dates. Uh, so so you guys are going out with Ben Ben's fold. Is this uh? Is this uh, do you guys get paired up a lot or do you guys usually do, uh, just... um, no, as, I mean, as long as I've been with the band, we haven't toured with Ben Folds. So, well, I mean, not Ben Folds in particular. I'm sorry. I, I guess I should have been more specific. Uh, like, do you guys get paired up with other acts at, at you know? Oh yeah. 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 We usually tour with, with another band. So the tour we did in May was with X x the um yeah the 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 band x oh sweet i've never heard of them what, what's the what kind of music is it like what's their genre um i would call it like rockabilly punk oh, but it's it's punk punk music from la oh okay so it fits it fits it fits definitely uh, your guys sound it's that sweet. yeah okay right on so that was yeah and then prior to that uh, we toured with echo and the Bunnymen. Oh shit, that's dope! Hell yeah! So, were you able to? I mean, like, I obviously I've never been on like these huge tours where you got like these, you know, you got like dressing rooms and crews and shit. But like, do you interact with the other bands at all, or do you mostly keep to yourselves? Um, I mean, we usually all interact. It just it depends, you know. Yeah, totally. if people are shy or not, really. But yeah, I mean, touring together. We, well, that we're bound to interact. <laughs> well, yeah, I, and I guess interact. I mean, is like I guess could be anything from saying hi to each other, passing in passing, or like going out for drinks. Of it, uh, do you? I mean, like, do you party with these guys? I I don't know. I mean, I don't imagine you much of a partier. I don't like just. I never remember you being a partier. Like, do you party? <laughs> That's such a. Sorry, that's a weird question. That sounds like I'm, I'm like uh, a hooker asking if you want if you want a good time. Uh, do you party, Blaze? Uh, no, but do you do you do you go out and party and like? I mean, you're a young guy, so I mean, I I know my past, but uh, I'm just curious. Do you do you like to go out and party, or are you more of a just staying home and working on me type of guy? Uh, honestly, it depends. Sometimes we go out and go out hard, but 
not all that, not frequently. Gotcha. Now I'm curious, you're out there. Do you, uh, you said you were living with roommates and stuff. Do you, do you, uh, how much time are you devoting to what you're currently working on? Like what, do you have like a, a schedule that you like to follow? Like, do you like to wake up early, go for a hike and work on music and then do this? Is it very scheduled or do you find it sort of just random? No, no schedule at all. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's yeah. nice. I like that. That's my life right now too. It's like, there's no schedules. I make my schedule. Um, that's what's awesome about living in Ohio is that you can sort of make your own schedule and, and work as a, which was another thing that was very nice moving to Ohio was the fact that I can work as a musician in Ohio. So that that was a big surprise and a pleasant surprise because I thought I was going to move out here from California and just wither away, you know, on the vine and just die, <laughs> just die of just a sad death of just overweight, bloated, fucking bald man. That's that's what I thought was going to happen. But uh, the, actually, the opposite is happening. And so that's very nice. Uh, do, do, so you're active in the music community. What what kind of local uh, acts are you working with right now? Yeah, so there's a, a group called CM3, which is a group of Taz, Tazzy local musicians who get together um, occasionally and perform. We do, and it's there's a handful of us, so it's it's not always the same lineup. Mm. But we essentially do jazz, um, hip hop, fusion, rap. Just depends on who's there, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So it's like this but, collective of musicians who get together and just sort of make stuff. Yeah, exactly. And there's a there's a music conservatorium here in Tasmania, which has um, some of the most amazing musicians in the world. Um, so there's not a lack of talent down here. That's awesome. What's what? Uh, what's the? Uh, do you know the population of uh, Hobart? I think Hobart is like two hundred thousand, maybe two fifty. Nice. So it, it's it's yeah. not it's not a huge huge city, but it's a big enough city where you have obviously artist activity and people are doing. Is it like a very arty kind of city? Is it like liberal? I guess is what we would call it here, like a liberal arts type of city. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a big arts scene that's getting larger, it seems. And I think in part that's due to the Museum Mona mm. here and what they're uh, doing, encouraging art and experimental art in the community and embracing it. And so um, that whole arts and culture scene is, is growing. And that was actually another one of the reasons I decided to move down here. I could see this growing, and I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of a city that's um, growing. Yeah, totally. No, that's awesome. It's like I want to be on the pulse of the scene, of this growing scene. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. And so are you pretty deeply embedded then? Like, are you pretty... Like, do you know, like, I mean, like, are do you know most of the heavy hitters around town? Or, I, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> does that make sense? I don't know heavy hitters. That's so silly. So, are you are you pretty embedded in the scene? I guess, like, you're you're deeply a part of it. I take it. Um. Yeah, I try to be. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Uh. So I I I know we're kind of jumping around here, but. I was just curious when you went into the studio and, and I got to listen. I listen. I didn't get to listen. I listened to the last album that you guys put out. And it's fucking awesome, man. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's fucking good. What, how big of a role were you in there? Were you, uh, were you helping with writing? Were you helping with arranging or was it like, Hey, here's these parts or make up this part. Like what was your role in the, um, in the band? Which, which album are you talking about specifically? I'm sorry. The last one, the one that came out, I think what was it 2015. I'm sorry. I don't know the name of it. I'm like, oh, okay. So not, not two mics in the truth. That was a live album. We just put out recently. Right. right. No, not that one. It, it was the, the studio album. And then I know you guys, oh, released, okay. and you guys released a, uh, a, a single where, uh, yeah. Right. 
to yeah okay cool uh okay another chorus is the this is the new single um and then we can do anything yeah, and then I that think album is, oh yeah go ahead no 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 uh we can do anything is what i was talking about and that's your first experience with them like playing uh on a studio album correct on a studio album yeah because at that point the femmes hadn't done a full studio album you know a very long time yeah we had put out an ep from uh the year prior that we recorded one day in tasmania while we were down here on tour Hmm. the same tour that uh you know was my first experience coming to tassie Uh um so yeah the ep had come out and i think that was probably my first recording in a studio experience with the with the femmes and so was that time in tasmania and then, so were you? Uh, what? How big of a role did you play in like the writing or uh, of of the music on this? So Gordon usually shows us a song, and we all uh, listen to it, and we all present our ideas, and we all kind of uh, critique it, I guess. But usually, nobody says anything if it's a good part, and if it's not a good part, then somebody will say something and then the part will change ah, I but i mean we all bring our own things to the writing process i guess okay so it, it's a group effort and, and gordon, but essentially at the end of the day brian and gordon um, have the final say got you now <laughs> and, and i'm not trying to cause a rift or be controversial is this something that they established when you came in or was this is this something that's unspoken you know, I'm not. I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no, I, you don't like. I'm not. I'm not trying to like make any waves or anything. I'm just. I'm just curious because. Uh, do you do you know Adrian uh, Gonzalez, uh, the saxophone player? He's he played with uh, the Mars Volta for a little bit. I don't know. Did you ever meet him? He was hanging around San Diego. For, well, he still does. No, I never met him. Well, because he, he was kind of saying. When he was talking about the Mars Volta and and he was ta- trying, he was kind of trying to say, um, you know, they had the final say, but everybody was writing. But um, the way that they told them, the two main guys told the band was only giving themselves the writing credits <laughs> on the albums. And of course, that created a big rift in the band, and uh, but we're, we don't need to go into all that. So I was just curious, and, and I, I know I just made a worse case for myself when I said I wasn't trying to make a rift. So let's move on. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so this sounds good. Yeah, I think so. So what this last single you guys did? Uh, what? So this is going to be a part of the new album. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you said you're finished with the new album? You guys are, are all done with it? Yeah, that's also correct. We're just, um, I mean, the album is finished, and now I think they're just pressing it and uh, getting it ready. Yeah, finishing it up, up for July post. 26th. Oh, okay. Oh, it's coming out in next month. Uh, yeah, well, July. Oh, it, we're in July. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Blaze, you are... For- <laughs> I feel like you should have been conducting this. <laughs> I'm in another fucking world right now. Dude, it's like my air conditioner went out. It's like fucking 100 degrees in my house. And it, it, it's, it's so funny. funny. I'm uh, I'm bundled up because it's so cold in ours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're, yeah, so we are doing it. We're doing it big here. Uh, so do you usually get up early in the morning? I mean, you sound scratchy. You sound like you just woke up like a half hour ago. Uh, you usually get up super early or you just, I don't know. Um, it depends, really. If, well, um, oh, go ahead. If I'm, if I'm not working, mm-hmm. then I just usually get up with the sun. Gotcha. Um, and then if I'm working, then I usually stay on, stay to a schedule. Mm. Yeah, and, and, you know, I was thinking, you know, when we were talking about, you know, doing this, uh, setting this up, you were just getting off an airplane and coming back, you were coming back from that, uh, the circus thing you were doing, correct? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, so I was going, yeah, I was in Melbourne, I think, at the time, 
but I started the journey from the Bahamas. <laughs> right. So you were on like a totally different fucking side of the world kind of and um yeah. and you had to fly back you had to fly into the future and the, so you're still recovering from that i take it yeah i've been getting up still around five four or five in the morning oh but God. you know i'll be uh, usually takes a couple of days yeah yeah, I mean, it fucks me up if I'm out west for, like, more than a week. It, I'm just, like, I come back to Ohio, and, like, it's like my life is over. I can't imagine what it's like flying into the fucking future, uh, flying into tomorrow and trying to figure out what the fuck, you know, your body's trying to catch up with you. Um, do you, uh, do you, when you're on the road, is there sort of a certain regimen that you like to stick to uh, in your health, and your diets? Like, is there... Um, I don't know. But what's sort of your regimen while you're traveling with, with touring and stuff? Um, well, I try to eat healthy. And um, that sometimes it's, that's hard depending on what the food at the venue is or what's around the area, yeah. you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do know. Um, so I usually also have like just snack foods like hummus and nuts. Um, if in case there's nothing really good around, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, fuck. Yeah, man. I always pack a lunch. I don't know where we're going. And, and like, I remember there was times when I was touring and like, I was on fucking like keto diet and when you're touring and keto, like it's so hard because you're trying to figure out, you're not trying to eat carbs and stuff. And you know, when you're stopping at gas stations, all it is is fucking sugar and carbs. It, it's, it's just, it's madness. Um, I, I, I kind of heard this interesting question that uh, from this comedian named Greg Fitzsimmon. He has his own uh, podcast. So I thought I was going to, I think I'm going to steal his question because he asks comedians usually who travel a lot. Uh, what, what do you pack when you're getting ready for the road? What, what goes into the suitcase? Um, usually two pairs of black jeans. Uh, and then depending on the weather shorts as well. Um, a uh, long sleeve shirt and then a bunch of black t-shirts and keep it simple you keep it simple yeah it's just all black <laughs> it that... makes it easy you don't have to match yeah no no that makes so much sense to me and and i know people like I, I used to work with this girl who did that and she was like you know what it takes it's like one less thing i have to think about it, it takes the you know, like no one's asking you about your outfit. Like, you know, like no one cares because you're wearing the same fucking thing you did yesterday. Is that, I mean, it just seems like it's one of those decisions where it's like, this will just, this is just easier to do this. Is that kind of where you see it or is it, is it like part of the uniform? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. It, so when you're going out with the, with the femmes, do they all wear black and stuff as well? Yeah, I mean that's our on stage. We wear all black, and then ah. for load in, load out, etc. So okay, okay, I get you, I get you. So um, when it comes to like, um, I mean, besides your gear, what 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 kind of other things like like what kind of electronics do you like to take with you? What kind of you know what what is it that you like to do? Like when you're traveling, are you reading books? Like what else do? You, what sort of uh for entertainment purposes or to pass the time? What what type of things do you like to bring? Um yeah, a bit of everything honestly. Books and uh, sometimes audio books, Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, I just bought a Nintendo Switch, which has been a lot of fun. Oh, shit. Those things are crazy. So I have uh, Mario Kart and Smash Brothers, a good, you know, multiplayer games. Hell, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you, oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, the So uh, I'm curious about how, what, how fast do you guys record? Is it a fast process or is it like, do you, do you guys take your time or do you guys just sort of work it out and just go knock it out? Like what's your guys' process when you're working out? New it's definitely new very fast and very efficient. The last album we did in five days. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just so like you guys. No, that's you, oh, go ahead. part of Brian's philosophy. You know, he's like, that's going to be the best 
the best takes are going to be the first couple takes creatively, you know. Mm -hmm. So so that's how you go. And then we do everything live. We do it in a in a live room, like in the old days with mic placement, um, which helps capture the the femmes sound, you know. Oh, okay. So is this sort of a way that they've always recorded, sort of a live feel? No, um, they definitely had fully produced studio albums. Well, yeah, I know, in I the know. Past, but um, well, I'm just saying, like, you know, like where you guys play live, because you guys will go in the live room and just sort of lay down the fundamental tracks, and then go back and lay over any overdubs. Is that what you were saying? No, we don't. No, we don't ever do overdubs. We just do it all in a, a live room. Oh shit! Uh, so I like, mean, very rarely do we do overdubs. Oh shit! We're gonna okay. feature a guest performer, maybe you know. Oh, oh, that is dope. Okay, okay, that's fucking really interesting. That's exactly how me and my wife recorded our album. It was just like we're gonna go do the song live. We're gonna do three versions of them. And then uh, we'll pick the best one and <laughs> we'll see how it goes, you know. And if the song doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then we'll move on. So uh, <clears throat> do you guys find yourself with uh, uh, a lot of material at the end? Or do you guys usually go in with the set amount of material and leave with the same amount of material? Um, depends. I mean, Gordon has so many songs. And, um, you know, he and Brian discuss which ones they think are going to be really strong. And then we all, you know, play them. And then the strongest ones are the ones that make it. Nice. So are you doing anything? Like, are you writing or composing anything for yourself? Yeah, occasionally, but it's just for fun. Um, I was doing some stuff in Ableton, just doing electronic music. Um, Because I I sometimes gig DJing and playing sax and flute. Oh, shit. That's so it's just making some stuff for that. Okay, so you'll go out with an original set and just DJ and then play sax and flute over it. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That is so cool. That uh, did, did you know Cubby, Jacob Miranda in San Diego? I don't think so. He kind of does. Some stuff. I, I'm sorry I'm bringing up all these people that you don't know. Uh, this, that, so so you're doing EDM type stuff. Is it is it like the the like the poof, 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 or is it like the uh, I don't know I don't know or, or uh, what's that one guy? I I'm so old now, dude. I'm like 36 now. <laughs> uh, fucking it, like I have no oh oh Deza or Deza or is that who it is? Is that a thing? Is that a name? That... Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I just make stuff that I like and um that I want to play and jam over. So I would say it's probably house. house. Be, uh, yeah. House music, I guess is probably the closest. Right on. So yeah. now we're going to, now we're going to kind of do some rapid fire because I, I know you're a busy man and I don't want to keep you too long. You got things to do. You got mountains to hike and shit, uh, but hold on. Uh, I'm, 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 they're in my phone, so just give me a second here. I'm, <laughs> I'm so, I'm just, I'm 200 episodes deep, and, and cool. I still give don't. me a second. I will go. I'm gonna go put a pot of coffee on, and I'll be back in a minute. Totally, man. And I'll look. Okay, I'm looking. I, I cannot believe how unprepared I am, and Blaze is so nice to. Give me his time, and I'm over here looking through my fucking phone, trying to ask questions that I ask constantly. Oh my god, this is it's ridiculous! It's ridiculous that I'm sitting here looking through my phone for questions that I ask all the time. But I found them, so thank goodness, thank goodness for that. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey. All right. You got your pot of coffee going. Uh, uh, how how much mm-hmm. how much coffee do you drink in a day? Uh, usually just one or two cups. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to cut back. Are you, <laughs> dude? No, like, okay. So for real, like, me and my wife were just having this conversation today, um, because I'm about to uh, go out west and jump on with fucking Skanks Roots Project for their little. They're they're doing a couple dates out there, so I was just going out there to hang out. Um, 
Uh, and I, I'm like, what's like the cheapest way I could be on the road with a coffee addiction? <laughs> because the problem is, is that I am physically addicted to it. Like if I, if I don't have it, I feel terrible. I have headaches. Like I'm, it, it literally makes me feel like I have the flu because of my past drug abuse. Uh, my body just gets addicted to anything that I put a lot of in. So I, I have to maintain some kind of, uh, you know, abstinence from some things. But coffee was one of those things that just sort of was like, oh, it's coffee. I could just drink as much as I want. So now I'm drinking like two pots a day. I'm fucking constantly on edge. Um, like if I don't have it, it's the worst thing in the world I can possibly think of. And I can't do anything without it. I might as well be on fucking heroin again, dude. It's fucking ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I'm, I've been thinking about like the, and, and the thing is, is that in the past month it's ramped up. Like, like I've had to double my intake for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm 36 now. My body's changed. I got here. My, I got hair in my fucking ears. Blaze, I got <laughs> hair in my fucking ears, man. It's ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like, fuck dude. Like if I go out on the road and I'm buying a Starbucks every fucking 10 miles, you know, that adds up. I can't be doing all that. I'm a musician. <laughs> That's not how this shit works. So I'm like, yeah, that's how I am on tour too. If I'm if I'm gonna have coffee, I just get one a day when I'm on tour. Right, you kind of gotta be frugal because. But you know, uh, we usually get cold brew, so. Yeah, I yeah, that's yeah the the it has that extra kick and it's not very hot, <laughs> and uh oh wait no they make them hot too right. Uh, I don't know. I, I just like cold coffee in I general. Do, so. I do too. Um, do you have? I, uh, I I have a Keurig, but. I generally put ice in my cup and then let the coffee fall off the ice because I like to slam it uh, so it hits my body as hard as possible uh, because I'm an addict, of course. Uh, but, uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you knew this, but I've been sober-ish, I mean, for the last six years. So I haven't drank or done, like, Oh, real congratulations. Drugs. Thank you. I mean, I don't know if the last time I talked to you, we talked about it, but... Just so you know, because like, I don't, you know, like you've seen me at my worst. And so, <laughs> just, you know, I, I've cleaned up my act a bit. So I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do with this coffee situation. And she's like, of course, she's like, you should just quit. It's fucking stupid. Like, just quit it. And I'm just thinking of the horrible pain of like, and, and for me, it'll probably be like a week of just horrible headaches. And I just don't want to deal with that, and because I got a lot to do before the before I fly out, so I'm like, I'm I'm kind of like, kind of not freaking out, but it's just like, what the fuck? What what was the cause for you to start petering off? Um. So back in the day, I was in a band in San Diego called Red Traffic, and we got a sponsorship from Monster, <laughs> and um, we got like. I don't know, six or seven pallets of Monster Energy drinks. <laughs> what the fuck? And um, I don't know. At, at my worst, I was drinking two to, I, I don't know, a couple of times I drank four, but I felt sick, so I, I wouldn't do that very often. <laughs> but usually two of those big cans a day. Oh. And then I did, was doing that for years, and then I decided to wean off and slow down it, so I was down to one can. And then I switched to coffee, and then I was on like 32 ounces of coffee a day. Whoa. Sometimes, sometimes more than that. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. But it's just like the the drip, you know. It's not like espresso. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, kept cutting back to just one large coffee a day, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at now. Uh, so, so you were just like, this is ridiculous. I'm drinking all this shit, and for what? Do you do you um? Uh, when you when you're consuming that much caffeine, do you notice a different in your moods and stuff? Like, do you feel like you? I mean, I know for me what it does for me. It just makes me into an erratic, fucking crazy person. But uh, I, I mean, what does it do for you? Yeah, I mean, this was when I this was when I was like nineteen, twenty. So yeah. this was a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I guess I, I had a lot of energy in general, so this just gave me even more energy. <laughs> You're like, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do hard drugs. I got monster bitch. Um 
Yeah. It's also when I was like tumbling and stuff, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, I mean, that takes a lot of energy. So um, I got these rapid fires and then we'll wrap up here so you can uh, so you can get on with your life. Um, hold on here. Let's see what we got. So, um, you know, you can answer these as short or as long as you want. And there's no time limit or anything. But uh, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Um, like my first time sitting in with the femmes, Steve McKay, who's a legendary saxophonist, who's the original sax player with Iggy and the Stooges, and he's performed with many amazing bands over the years. Um, but he was sitting in, he was the femmes horn player. And my first time sitting in, he said to me, don't worry if you play a wrong note, just play it again. Cause that means you meant to play it. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> just play if you're gonna make a mistake just do it twice and yeah yeah move on <laughs> I, that, you know but it was just uh light-hearted and good advice you know right but it's something that you fucking recall very quickly and it stuck with you and i actually i reference something too a lot when i ask this and uh, i reference uh, uh actually omar lopez he actually was the first one to ever say hey when you make a mistake on stage, don't show it on your face. <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's like really good advice. Like that's, I mean, and I still do it. Uh, I still show my mistakes on stage, but the way it comes out is like laughter. So I've kind of got it where I'm most, I like I smile a lot on stage while I'm playing. So like. Uh, if I, if I laugh all of a sudden, like if it's a huge mistake and I laugh, obviously, but if I'm just laughing at all these little stupid mistakes I'm making, it, it's not, you know, no one's going to notice, but I still do it. And, and it's still like, it's still a reaction, um, that I should have under control by now, but it's just, I'm just, I'm an impulsive asshole. So this is how it works. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So I like that. I like that. Play it twice, baby. Play it twice. Um, do you do you do you take effects with you on the road? No. Okay, so you just run straight in. Uh, so, yeah. so what's on your pedal board does not apply to you. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I have messed around with pedals mm, just for fun. Yeah. Um, Qtron envelope filter. Oh. Just because. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of horn players have done that. Um, it's a pretty specific funk sound. Yeah, totally. But I often find that those pedals are, are made for, you know, direct signal from a guitar. Right. So getting a, trying to get a signal off of a horn, it'll cut in and out depending on the, the register. Right. Yeah. So, so like, you, you've used it a little bit, but it was just having fun. It's nothing that you've taken into the studio or anything? No. Right on. That's awesome. I love that q Uh That thing is fucking amazing. Uh, so is there, um, so is there any weaknesses in your playing that you, and I hate to use the word weakness, uh, but it's just lack of a, my shit vocabulary. Um, it's, is there like a, is there a weakness in your playing that you're, uh, working on currently or something that you overcome in the past? Uh, and for me, I always reference my uh, my left hand is dog shit, so I constantly run drills on it, but it seems to not pay attention to the drills we run because it's still dog shit. Uh, but uh, is there something like that? And it doesn't have to be with the sax or the piano because you are a multi-instrumentalist as well. Uh, you play the piano and uh, sax. and Do you play something else too? I know you play the yeah, flute. Um, yeah, flute, clarinet, trombone. Oh, trombone. Fuck. Um, yeah. Do you play trumpet too? No, I play, I play a lot of other instruments as well. But like, they're lesser known, like a shakuhachi, which is a Japanese traditional flute. Ooh. And then I also play like Native American flutes as well. Ooh, I like that. Uh, shit. Oh, so uh, what, is there... Um, so it could be on any of those instruments or it could be on anything. It, uh, is there a weakness that you're currently working on or is there something that you've overcome in the past? Um, and, you know, specific? Yeah, so, um, you know, I play the berry a lot with the femmes and um, the tenor. Those are the two 
I mean, it's very tender and contra bass, and I don't have my contra bass with me to practice on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I'm often practicing on my berry and um, doing tonguing drills, like double and triple tonguing, um, just trying to maintain the uh, skill, mm-hmm. you know, make sure it's it's yeah. good. And then um, just going over scales and inversions. Okay, so you so you practice. Is this something that you like to practice regularly, or do you, is it something that you like to do just like before you hit the road or something? Um, pretty regular. Okay. And then another thing I started doing recently is because I like hiking so much. If I'm going on a light hike, mm-hmm. uh, I'll hike out and bring my sacks with me, and then I'll I'll just go practice out somewhere in the bush, and that's always really nice. That's awesome. Have you ever been, like blown in like a canyon or something and heard it like reverberate? Off oh yeah, the- actually yeah. I went out to Gordon Dam, which is like six hundred. I think it's six hundred meters tall. It's it's like one of the largest dams, um, in the southern hemisphere. Mm-hmm. And uh, I w- I went out to the dam. There was nobody there except for me, and I played on the dam and had the whole natural canyon reverb i actually posted a video on instagram but i got a natural you know yeah one two second <laughs> dude what's your fucking what's your insta handle are we friends uh it's just blaze garza oh my god why i have to i don't know if we're friends or not because now i have to see that video but i won't do that right now because we're talking <laughs> i hate that i hate how addictive we are to our phones that like Oh, and plus me, I'm impulsive, so I'm just like, immediately I start opening up my stupid social media and why we're talking, which is so ridiculous. <laughs> so, that's awesome, man. I, that's fucking, I, I, I love those natural reverbs. Uh, I carry around a recorder with me a lot when I'm on the road or wherever I'm going just to capture different sounds. I never use them. Never. Never fucking use any of them. But I have a whole library of just sounds, echoes, oceans. It's uh, never use them. Okay, we're moving on here. <laughs> uh, we only got a couple more left here. Uh, okay, so what is uh, what's like a? I know this is a hard question, uh, but what is a seminal album for you? Something where you listen to it and it just changed the way you look at music, changed like your life. It was just like holy shit. What what you know like? It, and I know it's hard to just say one, especially as a musician. But uh, is there one or two that you could think of? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Ghost of Hulse to Planets Suite is an amazing piece of music. It was written in the 30s. Um, the whole piece is, I think, close to 50 minutes. But there's a couple of different versions out there, like the London Symphony Orchestra and, you know, L.A. Phil. I'm sure a lot of other large orchestras have recordings out there but i think that's a very really really beautiful piece of music and it captures a lot of different emotions in all of the movements and it's also been pretty inspirational in uh modern day film composers Mm. Um, i guess modern day film scores would be like romantic music romantic period music i see yeah so so this um... I don't know much about classical, uh, so I don't, I can't speak that much on it. Uh, could you say the name of the uh, the composer again? It's Gustav Holst, H O L S T. Okay, and that was sort of. And a, the piece is called the Planets. The Planets, that's dope. I'm gonna have to listen to that now. Uh, so that was a piece that sort of uh, that sort of uh, inspired you and sort of shaped you as a musician and how you approach music. Um, yeah, I mean, for definitely for comp- composition wise, I do compose music uh, just for fun, and he's a big influence in that. Do you compose regard. like, do uh, besides house, do you like to compose like classical type pieces, like on finale or something? Uh, yeah, I used to bailiff, but often usually Bailey. just do it on paper first because oh. I find uh, you're limited with the computer in terms of the input. Mm-hmm. speed it's quicker to just write it by hand i see yeah yeah i guess sibelius and finale like are good for like 
writing it and printing the shit out and then actually hearing it in action it's nice that you can sort of hear what it sounds like and stuff uh, but that, but that tactile thing. Are you, are you a e-reader or do you like to read books, like, t- like the paper books? Um, I have both, I guess. I mean, I, ha- I like books, but I also read on my phone. Yeah, yeah. So just however it works, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> okay, we only got a couple more here, man. I, I have to pee so bad, and I know you need to know that, but. Yeah. Okay. So, um, are you hard on yourself? Like, if you make mistakes, or uh, do you do you, are you, do you go hard on yourself, or do you what? How how do you how do you manage? Um, how do you manage like mistakes, or how do you, I call it failure? But like, I don't mean failure as in the sense of like I gave up because I feel like failure is a huge part of learning. You have to. You know, you have to fuck up to learn how to do it right. And if you keep fucking up and keep doing the same thing over and over again, then you, then I guess, then you are a failure. But I don't know. Uh, but uh, are you hard on yourself when you have those moments, or are you pretty easy about just, just let it go? I think um, in the moment, if it's an on stage thing, mm-hmm. or if I don't think I played as well as I could have, I don't let it show, but then I might think about it after the fact. And then, um, you know, usually you can find the videos online on YouTube um, or somewhere. Somebody's usually posted something. Then I'll listen to it again. And often when I listen back, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Uh, so I'm learning to be like if I find if I think something's bad, just to accept and, uh, you know, move like move on trying to let it affect me or bother me. Now, is this something, you said you were working on this, is this something when you were younger, something that might have weighed a little harder on you? Or is it... Um, I think, yeah, when I was a lot younger, when I was learning sax and trying to get better, it was a big thing. But mm-hmm. as I've gotten older, I, I, you know, I just, um, it doesn't bother me so much. Yeah, I, I I think that's part of the whole like getting comfortable as well as yourself, being comfortable in your own skin first off, but then being comfortable as a musician on stage, and then just being comfortable and being okay that mistakes are gonna happen. Yeah, I, uh, I had a hard time with that, but I mean, the amount of mistakes I make is just ridiculous. So. <laughs> So is it, I, 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 you know, as I, I'm listening back to all the things, I've been talking so much shit about myself this whole podcast. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. Uh, I, I try not to do no, that. No, you need to be positive. No, you're right. No, and because I, I have tried to be positive. No, I'm being positive now, and it's totally changed my life. And I, I, obviously, sometimes when I'm on the podcast, I speak in hy- hyperbole, and I'll just, you know, I'll trash yeah. myself because it's funny. But I, I've been noticing, like, I've been saying a, a lot. You know, just just in this last hour we've been talking, I've been sitting here shitting on myself a lot. No, like, do you, do you find yourself, uh, do you try to be positive? Do you try to lean towards the positive side of things? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I believe that, like, if you put out positive energy, it'll come back. Yeah. No, that's that's real shit. Like, like if I cut somebody off in traffic, I, you know, I'll definitely wave to try to defuse the situation. <laughs> it's like I know that was a dick move, but hey, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. It's um, you know what? Po- like the idea of positivity to me was uh, at one point in my life was like I saw it as a a, a weakness almost. Like someone who is like I just got to be positive. I just need to be about and and like for me, I was just like. If you can't accept that there's negative things in the world, then you you're in for a shitstorm. But it, but being positive doesn't mean that you don't recognize that there's negativity and horrible things that happen in the world. But it's sort of trying to uh, I mean I mean you're literally trying to shift your focus. Like for me, I was such a negative person. Like I literally, it's been years of rewiring and meditation uh, to try to f- not look at everything like like it like in the worst possible outcome 
Um, I don't know. Like it, for me, positivity has been, uh, especially coming back to Toledo, because I didn't want to come back to Toledo. I did not want to come back to Ohio, but my wife wanted out, so that's what happened. Uh, but if it wasn't for me really diving into positivity and really diving into uh, trying to look at things with with a lighter shade, uh, I I don't. I think I would have just self imploded because just just because I, I don't know if you have these problems but like uh like just thinking uh, like negative loop thought loops you know just sitting there dogging on yourself over and over and over again or or or, or looking at the world in such a bad way or or like for instance when i was coming to toledo i was like toledo is gonna be a horrible place where i'm gonna wither away on the vine you know i'm gonna die on the vine as a musician a fat bald guy whatever uh it <laughs> you find yourself trapped in those loops if you ever i mean like has that ever been a problem for you i mean like you've always seemed like you're not like a you're not a loud person but you've always seen you always carry yourself with a sense of confidence that i've never had really um uh, is, is is that is that i don't know is was was there ever a time in your life where you might have focused on the negative or have you always tried to be this positive light <laughs> Um, I think I've always tried to be positive, honestly. No, no, because no, I, and like knowing you, you know, knowing you who you were, you know, a few years ago, um, and I'm sure you, you haven't changed all that much. Uh, you've always been like a very nice person who's always just like, hey, what's up, guys? Let's just be friends, you know? Like, so, so it, it, you could tell that you've had a healthy sense of self since you're coming up. Um, do, do Anyways, that that's a whole nother conversation, and and again, I have to pee, so <laughs> we'll get past the shit. Um, what is your uh, what is your first memory? Uh, I think going to the zoo in Texas. Um, my sister was really young and in a stroller, and I just remember looking at the elephants. Um, and I think that memory sticks because it, it might have been my first time seeing elephants. Yeah, I think that would have been like four or five. Oh, nice! That's a very nice memory. Like mine is mine is carving soap at preschool, <laughs> which is a nice memory too. I made a dinosaur. <laughs> uh, and then I got this one last one here, and I don't know if I'm gonna actually ask you what is it. Um, oh, what was your view of your childhood? Like, how do you view your childhood? Um just it, it, like a feeling when you think of your childhood what's the feeling that just sort of comes to you um well we we moved around a lot because my parents were in the marine corps so um it's a lot of different places growing up and um uh, i don't know i was also working a lot doing commercials and film so if you yeah, could... i'm not sure i guess it's i mean it's where all my whole career started and I haven't really stopped since then. So it's just like, that's yeah. interesting. That's interesting that you've been working since how, when's your first gig? What was your first, how old were you? I was like five or six. Um, it was a commercial national commercial, but I mean, I have been doing pageants at, from the age of two. Oh so <laughs> holy shit. So you've just been a performer your entire fucking life. That's uh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's that's i mean it's obvious you're fucking doing it do you do you feel do you feel like um do you, i don't know like do you feel uh do you feel like you're fulfilling your best life right now yeah i think so uh i, I mean i, I that, think so as well um, i'm just curious if you felt that yeah way. yeah nice that's awesome man and i think that's a great place to leave off uh Blaze, like when it, when I see you on Facebook and stuff, and see you jet setting across the world, like it just like to me, it brings me so much happiness to see that you're doing this and and you are living your best life, and and it's wonderful to know that 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 you are, you know, and I'm just like proud of you, and I I know you don't need my pride, I guess, but <laughs> I just I just want you to know, like it, like I'm proud to know you, and like I think that uh, I you've just always been such a nice person and like you've always been a delight to just bump into or just be on the road with or whatever this situation was you've always just been a really nice guy 
so I, oh, I appreciate thanks, that. And uh, it, I just love seeing you on Facebook. And I, I, just, I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next, man. And, and I, dude, I can't wait to see that circus saxophone stuff, man. Because like, that shit was dope. Uh, hell yeah, man! <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this, man. And um, what what do you what do you got planned for the rest of your day? What do you, what do you got on the agenda? Uh, I'm gonna do some make some breakfast and then probably go on a hike. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Musician life, baby. Uh, all right, man. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, and I fucking thoroughly enjoyed you know catching up and. And uh, seeing where you're at in the world, man. Like, it's fucking, it's great to see. Likewise, and same to you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Blaze, for chatting with me and taking time out of your busy ass lifestyle to chat with your old pal, Mikey P. Um, again, you can find the Violent Femmes on tour right now. They'll be in Los Angeles. Let me see. Hold on. I'm going to actually go to the website here because why the fuck not? I'm right here. I might as well. Shit. Shit. Uh, so they're going to be uh, this Friday, uh, August 23rd, 2019 in Los Angeles at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, then August 25th at The Thing. I don't know what that is, uh, but it's in Port Townsend, Washington. And then September 6th, Shadow Ridge Music Festival. September 7th, Blue Stream Amphitheater. September 13th, Riot Fest. Um, and uh, let's see, September 14th, at Meyer Theater in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So all these uh, all these shows, uh, I mean, I'm sure they don't need me advertising their shows. I'm sure plenty of people are going to show up. They don't need me to sell tickets. That's for goddamn sure. Uh, also, they got a new album out, and uh, you should definitely go check it out. I, I really dig it. It's called Hotel Last Resort, and your, your boy Blaze is on it. So go check that out. And, of course, go check out the Nikes because they're, they're pretty fresh, I got to say. Fresh. Okay, my bad. I won't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, go do all that stuff. You can also go check out rainamystique.com, R-E-I-N-A, R-E-I-N-A-M-Y-S-T-I-Q-U-E.com. Check out the latest and greatest album from Rain of Mystique 1018. I had the honor of penning a few of the songs alongside my lovely wife on this beautiful EP. We are very proud of it, and we think you'll like it too. You can go to the newly redesigned WeSpeakEnglishGood.net. Check it out. There's some things going on there. There's show, there's my shows and what, okay, just go to the website, okay? <laughs> if you want, you don't have to go there. <laughs> you can write the show. Please, actually write the show. Let us know what you think about uh, wrist grips, if you had a chance to try those, or what you think about this episode. What, what did you think about the 200th? I mean, I, I thought it went swimmingly. Um, uh, and again, I want to give a special th- shout out to wristgrips.com. Thank you, Ryan, for sending me a pair of wrist grips. Uh, I highly suggest it for any musician who is having wrist pains uh, and, uh, and, and tinnitus. It, it, it helps. It helps curb those pains. But we're going to talk about that more in the future. Right now, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to wristgrips.com. Uh, you can also go and follow us on Instagram. At we speak English good or on Facebook by the same we speak English good stop by leave a comment leave a comment and I'll read it on there um, leave a comment on the SoundCloud feed whatever anyways uh, I, I really appreciate blaze and I really appreciate you guys for sticking with me for 200 episodes uh, we were on a climb there for a while but but I I, I went on tour and and I did some reruns, and my God, you guys hate reruns. So uh, I know uh, we kind of plateaued out since the since the since the rerun debacle, which we know that we only do once in a great while. <laughs> we don't do back to back reruns. We learned that the hard way. 
So uh, I'm just being honest with with the guy with everybody who stuck with me through this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I for 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 me, I really love those first episodes, those first like eighty some episodes that take place in San Diego, uh, in my studio. Like to me, that was like that was the funnest part about this show was having people come to the show, come to my studio. And have all the sound effects on my sound pad and have, you know, all, all kinds of fun stuff going on. Um, it, I mean, I miss San Diego. It's, it's an amazing place. But it's interesting that as soon as that, as soon as I changed the format of the show from that, like, traditional-ish, traditional-ish, not traditionalist, but traditional-ish <laughs> type show like uh, i had it set up almost like a night show or or talk show or uh, yeah so you had the the opening me and the co-host would have a little banter back and forth sometimes there'd be sketches and then the band or my effects pad would play our guest on we'd have the guest we'd chat it up play a game i loved it but as soon as i took this show on the road for van life and as soon as i started doing the show by myself and doing it in this like very punk rock uh kind of way where we just show up at a restaurant or or wherever uh, you know backstage at a, at a concert whatever it is uh i i i mean i would have never guessed that that's what people want more i mean i but like i said i really like those first like 80 some episodes that take place in the garage or in the studio it was a garage and we turned it into a studio out in san diego but you know the people have spoken (laughs) they do (laughs) you guys don't really care about uh all the bells and whistles more than the actual content of the conversation which i guess now that i think about it it makes sense that that those sound effects and uh, those were kind of crutches and it, it was a crutch for someone who didn't really um know what the fuck they were doing <laughs> and so as you get better at things you know you get a little bit more competent in, in these little increments and 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 right now i really think that i'm i'm at my best now i really do i really believe that i'm I'm at my best at interviewing people and and just talking to people in general because this podcast has afforded me so much more than just a a platform for me to just spill my innermost darkest secrets on, which I don't. (laughs) I don't spill my innermost darkest secrets on this podcast, but I do reveal a lot about myself and... The show has just provided so much more than than me just spilling my guts and 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 being way over oversharing way too much. It's provided me a, a sense of of confidence. Um, before I started this show, I was very I, I mean like I, I could talk to people, but like I I just feel like I I, I had a hard time connecting, and I had a hard time. Uh, being able to think of something to say next or, or, or just because of my own anxieties. And, and this show kind of smashed those anxieties into little tiny pieces and then shit on them and then, and then incinerated them. Because here's the thing. When, uh, when you're about to interview someone who you really respect and you kind of have like the, an anxious thing about yourself already, um, that shit, uh, you you gotta put that shit aside. Like you can't just sit there and be like, you know, and like not think of something to say. Or or, or. here's the thing: it's it's you're not thinking of things to say. More or less, you're you're re- reacting and responding, and and it's like acting, I guess, in a in a sense. You're you're not just reciting words. You're you're re- reacting to the other person. And, and that's kind of the same way in a conversation. You, you're reacting to what someone said, and I, I feel like that this show has 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 forced me to become a better listener and a better responder and a better reactor. And and that applies in in the real world too. Outside of the show, like it, it's just made it's made me be more concise with my thought process and, and and communicate effectively with other people and that is so fucking valuable 
<laughs> as especially as a as a business owner, uh, which the business is me and and my podcast and and my uh, talents. Um, if if you don't have any kind of networking or or, or speaking skills, you're gonna run into a lot of rough waters because you're selling yourself. You're constantly selling yourself, and as as gross as that sounds, that's the truth of this. If and if you want to be in business for yourself, you have to be able to talk to people. You have to be able to network. You have to be able to to uh, wipe the sweat off your brow and motherfucking step up. And that's what this show did. It, it shattered those anxieties about meeting new people and going to new places and and, and being afraid of the unknown. And it sort of uh, forced me to embrace the unknown, and and that's that's valuable. That's very valuable. Besides, you know, giving me a a a voice, uh, uh, the show has also provided uh, just a huge network of of just of, of like mini friends. I mean, it's like it's like the people I interview aren't my best friends or anything. You know, like uh, some of them are, uh, but. But it's not like after the show we have this amazing conversation and then we you know we hang out all the time. But uh, we do, you do connect with people and you do bond with them in these one to two hour episodes of of just talking to someone. And when you see them out in 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 the bars or out on the street or out on tour. It's like it's like having little like ally friends out there. They're just like, oh, hey, it's you. And I remember we did that thing and it was fun and we connected. And and, and it, it's just, it's nice. It's nice to have like little mini friends all over the country. So not only has it provided me a voice and, 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 and a network of, of mini friends, but it's it, it's just given me something consistent to to work at and to try to improve on and 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 the fact that we're at episode 200 is just it's it's amazing like uh, i i i've always been someone who just sort of starts something and doesn't finish it and I, the thing about podcasts is like are they ever fucking finished like is it ever you know the last episode i mean it is it, when you just sort of neglect it and just stop doing it but I, I don't know. Like it just it's it feels like a, a forever art project that I forever get to do that I forever get to be creative in any way that I can possibly think of. Because I, I, I from the beginning this show has always been I've always been um I've always wanted to be malleable. I've always wanted this show to be something that can change with me and something that can and that can go with me wherever I, I want it to go. And, and and it has and it, and that's it, it it's just been such a cool like transformation and and so unexpected too like how do you triple your audience when you have all this production and then you you cut the production just immediately cut it and then all of a sudden it's like uh kick the door down punk rock anarchy fucking show up with a microphone and shove it in people's faces and be like talk to me you know like <laughs> But you know, like I, I, I never would have thought that that's what would you know boost my audience is just making the show less, not less quality. That sounds like I'm shitting on the show, but like bringing the the production level down. Uh, I I wouldn't have known that. I mean, like like I said, personally, I love those episodes. I think they're fucking awesome. Although I cringe when I do listen to them, which I don't listen to them very often. But when I do brave it and listen to those older episodes i think it's awesome like it's just a fun it's a fun format but what i hear and 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 i'm guessing as my talents got better at talking to people and and the and the numbers go up you know there's a correlation there so when you listen back to those old episodes and i'm just sort of stammering asking stupid questions or asking questions that are like that you just asked and because you're nervous, you just sort of forget that you asked those questions. And then I, I like how people will be like, again, like I already said, like I stated before, dipshit, which I still do that. I don't, you know, like people do that, you know, even the best still do that. So 
hey, whatever. You know, this is a conversation, right? This is what it's supposed to be, a, a back and forth. And sometimes in conversations with people, you repeat yourself. And that's how it goes. And that's how it goes. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm just super proud of this show. And it's 200 episodes is, is, is just, it's astounding. And I, I'm, I'm really happy that, like, fucking... I get to do this shit and, and, and I get to talk to cool ass people. And like, it, it, most of all, like out of everything that I've gotten out of this podcast, it's just the, the pure connection to people, these emotional connections that we have and, and, and it gets emotional and sometimes it doesn't, you know, sometimes there's no emotion. Like it's, you know, straight talk and uh, it, well, there's always emotion involved, but it doesn't get I guess what I'm referring to is how personal the show has gotten for for me and for my guests and how people will come on this show and, and not expect to talk about anything, you know, anything that's going to make them cry or, or get all like teary eyed or or upset or, or whatever it is. And, and to have those natural, real moments with other people those connections is it's just been incredible and it's made me learn so much about myself and how how i process information and and it's just it's sharing information you know like we're sharing information whether it's personal or or useful or whatever it is we're we're sharing information and and i think that's the key to this I, I think that's what makes this a good and moral pursuit which is, <laughs> i've been listening to a lot of jordan peterson lately hey don't think that i'm some weird alt right guy okay he has some interesting things interesting things to say and uh, i would highly suggest it uh jordan peterson but anyways it's got me thinking i'm uh, He's got me thinking about, you know, what am I doing something that's moral? Is it good? Is my pursuit in life have heart? You know, and and I honestly believe that that this is an honest and moral and and good pursuit because at the core of it it's sharing information. And information is 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 key here. Uh the reason why we even have a platform for podcasts, I'm talking about podcasters and is is because internet and the internet is the biggest source of information now and it's changed the entire fucking world and and it's it's given it's awakened so many people because when you don't have information information has always been hoarded it's always been uh, you know it, it's like I did my secret recipe you know like this is my secret recipe which is fine. You can have your secret recipes, but I'm just giving you an example of, you know, hoarding information. But a better example, I think, is is, is like back in the day when, you know, the upper class, the upper crust would keep the serfs unable to read and, you know, they don't know math. And when you keep people stupid, it's easier to control them. And so at the core of this show is is just a transference of information. And 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 that is is good and moral pursuit as I think you can get is teaching is is spreading information is like is telling people because I don't know if you've noticed this but it, throughout the the shows there's sometimes I'll take time to stop and be like hey I think this is a valuable piece of information right here like get all your uh, get all your your dynamics get your structure of your song before you go to the studio. Ooh. I just burped into the microphone. Sorry. Hey, this is the free form part, so you can check out anytime. I'm just doing stream of consciousness right now. So if this is getting off kilter, please, it's fine. You can just stop where you're at right now and 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 move on. But if you're interested, let's keep going. So um, you know, at the core of this is, is spreading information and, and, and informing people. And, and, and it doesn't just come, it doesn't just stop at, at informing people about technical things like, you know, recording and having your shit in one sock before you go to the studio so you're not paying to uh, arrange your own song. So I've been just wrestling with 
you know, things uh, with with these ideas of, of, of what am I contributing? How am I bettering myself so I can be better for other people? And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at in life. Like, I just want to be a better person so I can be better for people who love me and you uh, or people who who you know well i i guess people who love me and i'm saying like my family is <laughs> like you might love me if you're a listener and you listen to the if you've been listening to this show for any amount of time you might love me i don't know and that's fine i appreciate it i always appreciate good vibes sent my way uh, but but that's i i i'm just trying to i'm trying to move away from a person that I don't like to be, or at least I'm trying to move away from uh, aspects of a person that I don't want to be. Not that I'm trying to change who I am or anything like, which I am, but not like wholly. I'm not just like, oh, I'm just going to be totally different. Oh, <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to be a woman. No, it's not like that. It's, uh, it's, it's just that there's certain aspects of myself that I, I want to move away from and move past. And I'm finding that focusing on good pursuits, moral pursuits, is, 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 is sort of, it's given me legs to sort of leave those aspects that I don't like about myself behind. It's kind of given me new perspectives on how to face those aspects of myself that I don't like and, and, and just move past it. And it's kind of working. I mean, it's a lot of work, but, but I don't know. It's, 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 I, I, I've just been, um, I've been just really trying to help more and not just spread information through the podcast, but personally just help my family or, or help, you know, just help out in my community in any way I can. And, and there is this, there is this, there is this self-serving principle to that, but there is also this, this other side of it that's, that, uh, for whatever reason, when you do these things, you know, these things that help other people, when you put good into the world, it, it somehow comes back to you. And, and, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't require a lot, you know, like, whatever it is it can be a small thing but it does come back to you in a way and and when you choose to do terrible or bad things that you that you know that aren't right and uh you know i know that's subjective you know right and wrong is very subjective to person to person but you know when you're pursuing things that aren't a, of of a moral status you know, you create your own personal sort of of, of dystopia you know i think jordan peterson calls it your own personal hell but 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 i recognize these things when i do something when it even if it's like eating past seven because i'm an intermittent um i intermittent eat so i i start at noon and end at 7 p.m and uh even when i eat late into the night you know like the repercussions of that is is not only is it health but the next day my attitude and my energy levels and and so when you when you do something where that you know isn't the right path it 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 comes back to you in, in so many different ways and, and you create your own personal little dystopia and, and 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 then the people around you have to deal with it so for instance, when I eat like pie right before bed, the next day I feel terrible. I'm swollen. Um, you know, my sugar's all fucking out of whack. Not that I'm diabetic, but you can just feel your blood sugar's all fucked up. My attitude is terrible uh, and depression sets in. And so all those things affect all the people that you that surround you on a daily basis. So if I'm crabby and feeling like shit, then I'm going to put that off into my son or my wife and then they're going to absorb that and then they're going to toss it back at me and then it's going to start this little back and forth which is which can turn into a week long fight or you know whatever it is or or these little resentments that build into divorce or or hatred or resentment so it's just it, it it's just taking the time 
to uh, I'm 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 just personally taking the time right now to uh, to re-examine what I'm doing and what I'm pursuing. And I've decided that the pursuit of art and music is good and moral and it is self-serving, but it is but it but it brings happiness and it brings joy to people. And I, I, I love that. And and even if I'm playing some dive bar and there's just some drunk person just having the best time of their life, you know what, for those for those for that like two hours out of that evening, that guy forgot about the bullshit at home or, or the bullshit at work and 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 he was there just ab- like absorbing our energy and giving it back in a very positive way and or, or when i get positive feedback from the show where people are just like wow this is really good thank you so much you know like that you know like hearing back from you guys is great i love it and um and i, I just love that people are listening and that they are taking the information that I'm sharing here and, and hopefully utilizing it in, in, in making their lives better and spreading good in the things that they do. So, you know, here we are, uh, 200 episodes, and uh, this is where I'm at. And I think this is a good marker for, uh, you know, for future me. So if future me is listening, hey, right now in your life, things aren't as bad as you might think they are. Which they're not. I mean, things right now at this current moment aren't the greatest. But, I mean, I'm alive. I have a roof. And, you know, I, I it, my aunt just passed away last night. So, it's, it's only not great because of that. And because of all the stuff that comes with that. So, uh, my Tia Maria, she passed away. And... Um, so that's why I dedicated this show to her at the very beginning. And, um, you know, even with her passing, uh, there's still a lot of good out of it. I mean, she had a, she had a rough, she had a rough past nine months. And this is a woman who, who has just had the biggest heart and who's had, um, who's had the back of the family and preserved the culture and history of my family and uh, she's just the most amazing woman and just hilariously blunt like hilar- hilariously hilariously she was just very funny like uh, she's just unintentionally funny she's one of those people who would just say something she's like mm, whatever i don't have to live with her it's not my problem you know like that kind of shit you know that's my terrible mexican accent that i hey hi yeah yeah <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's what happened. So things are good right now, and and the good of her passing is that her suffering is over, and 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 so I'm gonna, I'm choosing, I'm making the conscious decision to focus on that, and not focus on my loss, and my my the fact that I don't get to be hanging out with her anymore, and I don't. You know, like th- she's not going to be able to cook me mole anymore for my birthday. It's it's um, I'm choosing to focus on that. She is no longer suffering and um, and goddamn she suffered. So uh, R.I.P. Tia. And and uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take this into this place. And it, it gets sad, but that's life, man. Life is life gets sad. And uh, if you're not building these these if you're not building strength and 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 in in your life if you're not building up your skill levels if you're not building up your ability to communicate if you're not working on yourself then it, when these moments come you're just going to fucking crumble man and and that's what i want i want to be i want to be a pillar for this family and i want to be strong and 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 that's what i'm doing i'm working on being strong for other people I'm being, I'm working on myself so I can help other people. You know, I love myself so I can love other people. And and that's where I'm at right now. And that's the 200th episode, guys. So I, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. And I appreciate you spreading the word out there. And, um, and I love each and every one of you motherfuckers who are listening to this. And I hope that uh, this show has given you... Um, 
the I hope it's given you even a quarter of what it's given me. So, and and, and that's a lot. So, um, be good to your fellow human beings. H chase for everybody. Fresh. Fresh.